welcome to Mad Dog and Merrill's Midwest Grilling. America's grilling buddies, but today it's Americans golfing buddies. Yes. We are at uh, Thornberry Creek at Oneida, the most gorgeous golf course in Wisconsin. Stay tuned, because we're going to be doing some great golf grilling recipes for you good folks. Oh, hey, I'm excited. I'm excited, man. You better believe it. Sit back and relax. Man, I guess. It's time That'd to shoot a few holes of golf and relax. <laughs> Mad Dog and Merrill's Midwest Grillin' is brought to you by Modern Home Products, the makers of MHP, Phoenix, and Profire Grills, Pit Boss Pellet Grills, Cherry Delight, Native American Tourism of Wisconsin, Healthy Homegrown Wisconsin Potatoes, Sundrop Soda, Shooting Star Casino, Awesome Shrimp and Seafood, The Oneida Nation, and by Lashbro Aerial Images. Well, welcome back to Mad Dog and Merrill's Midwest Grilling. We are American Grilling Buddies. Please Fast Freddy on the keyboard. You got it. Yeah. Mr. Merrill next to Fast you Freddy. You got it. And I'll be at the helm, Mr. Mad Dog. And he's got it. And uh, we are at uh, uh, GolfThornberry.com. <laughs> GolfThornberry.com, the most gorgeous golf course in Wisconsin. Beautiful. The PGA has been here. The ladies golf tournament has been here. Just, just amazing. Absolutely just, beautiful. 27 beautiful holes. I've been here, uh, too. Have you really? Yeah, I have, too. Yeah, 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 yeah. A lot of good friends of ours golf here. It's the official uh, uh, Green Bay Packer golf course. Is it really? Yeah, really? yeah. And the facility is phenomenal. The banquet halls, <laughs> four banquet halls, just oh, state of the art. All That's brick. It's a huge just, place. It's man. a big place. Bigger than you think when you yeah. walk in, isn't it? And yeah. gorgeous. And uh, we got Adam on with us uh, in the next segment coming from the chef there. We're going to have a little smack down, a little grill down, if oh, you will. Oh, yeah, we're ready. I'm we're going to caramelize some onions in 25 minutes. Chef takes two hours. With, so we're going to do our best. We are. We'll, we'll try. <laughs> we should get yours on, maybe. Your caramelized All right, onions. Caramelized onions. I love caramelized onions. I love the smell of caramelized onions. I love the onions. taste of caramelized onions. Oh, I love the taste of caramelized uh. onions. So what I'm going to do is uh, you don't need that much butter, that much olive oil. I'm going to lose a little bit of butter. You can use the butter. Beautiful cast iron skillet. You can skillet, use the butter man. of your choice, matter of fact. I don't even need that to put that on. That's so nice. A little bit of olive oil. Now, the big thing on the caramelized onions, you know, saute onions, you sort of do them a lot faster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and you're just browning them up a little bit. But saute onions, I mean, the caramelized onions, you're caramelizing them. You want to just do them on a nice, low, low heat. Start out high. Bring it down, and then you just stir them right up. The chef takes two hours with them, and you, you really do at home. What you're doing is what? Bringing out the natural sugars? Well, yeah, yeah. There's natural sugars on there. That's what actually brings the color <laughs> out of it, oh, too. baby. Hey, how are you doing there, Freddy <laughs> boy? I cried you. don't have to cry, man. <laughs> it's just a grilling show. We'll be done real soon here. That's terrible. So, so we're going to stir those around. I'll put those on the grill. So Mer Merrill peeled me an meat. onion, and what you do, you don't cut onion rings, apparently. No. Apparently, what you want to do is cut downward and you turn it and you cut with the grain of the onion and not across the grain and the natural sugars that way come out better? Yeah, they do. I never knew that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, for, yeah. For, for caramelizing onions, that's the way you do it. Wow. So you want me to help you get that? Yeah, can you do that for me, sir? That's, that's a pile of onions, buddy. So Alrighty. we're going we're to try, Meryl's going to try to get these done in about a, a 45 minute deal. Right. On oh, the, yeah, yeah, on, on the pit boss. On the pit boss, man. We got this all set up. Get those going. I'll keep on checking and keep on stirring. So that's going to add a nice smoky flavor at the same time. It is, it is. You I just got to keep on I, stirring. I think that's going to be our challenge. Uh, it might be our challenge out. of smokiness. When we'll it, show it him. Happens. We'll show him. Huh. Secret Two ingredient. Hours. The secret ingredient. I'll keep. If I didn't already say it, we are at Thornberry Creek at Oneida, which means we are with our good friends at Oneida Nation. And uh, you can go to exploreoneida.com to learn about the, uh, the Wall of Legends, the Veterans Wall, yeah, beautiful. Uh, Big Apple Fest, the powwows, all the great events, tours that you can take now that everything's opened up again, tours that you can take of the, of the great Oneida Nation. What a great place. But we're talking today more about the golf course, more about Thornberry, and more about, uh, you know, golfing can be relaxing. <laughs> to you, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Are you relaxed when you golf? I am. Are you? Yeah, 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 yeah. Because I know you're going to mess up. Yeah. The man's going to mess up, and the lady's going to mess up, and first going to mess up. We're going to do a little cast iron cooking. All right. Uh, when you when you visit uh, uh, like Apple Fest, big Apple Fest uh, with Oneida Nations, it's, it's at their cultural village, and it talk and it has the 
1800 log homes there and it has the 1600 style log house or the, the, the long house, long house there. Uh, and they used a lot of cast iron skillets. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna build ourselves a little three sisters casserole. And I'm gonna do it in the fashion of, uh, Freddie, do you ever make scalloped potatoes? Has Kathy made scalloped yeah, potatoes? I've had those, sure. You've, you've had them. But I didn't make them. Yeah, yeah. So, well, so it's, Freddie, it's about time to start. It's, well, one of, it's one of the first things my dad taught me with flour, butter, and cream, and then salt and pepper in between the layers. So I'm gonna do that version of it, if okay. you will. Uh, so we're going to start out with, and I want to get them cooked. So th this is beautiful squash that I actually peeled wow. and cut myself, which was an effort. I so thought, what's it going to do with that cheese? Yeah, did I, that's what I thought. You know? <laughs> yeah, that's beautiful along. squash. That's one of the three sisters, by the way. We know. Look yeah. at that beautiful wood carving of the three sisters at that oh, village. That's beautiful. It really, really is. And, and then we're going to toss some beans over the top of that so it's a nice little layer. Uh, we have their white corn. Now, if you notice down here, I place a whole nice little thing. I don't know which is the white corn flour and which is the whole white corn, but the white corn dried is the way you get it dehydrated and you have to bring it back to life. Uh, the wild rice that we're using, uh, they get them in at their market at 500 Packerland Avenue is the Oneida market. Oh, yeah, and you get place. all these great items here, great gifts, great herbal teas that we're gonna be using in the next segment. The wild rice comes from Minnesota uh, near the Shooting Star Casino where we were. Oh yeah, okay. Up by Monoman, which right. is Wild Rice River. Uh, so we have the right, wild rice right. from Minnesota that they get in there, which comes wonderful. So we have the white hominy, the white corn. So we're going to put a layer of that in there. Now I chose instead of mushrooms, uh, it's, it's that time of year. And when you come to the restaurant here in Chef Adam, they buy everything local. They want to source, right. not everything, but they source a lot of things local. There's something for everybody here. And, and, it's, and it's just the most unique little uh, menus in the world. So I'm going to cut off the stems and I'm just going right. to use the, the, the top parts. Wow. And we're gonna put a little asparagus, so we're gonna do some layers here. So here's what we're gonna do. This is the way we do scalloped potatoes in the Norwegian style. Now uh, you take some nice butter and you plop a couple good tabs of butter down. And then you take some of the white flour. Thank God we're doing <laughs> down, huh? like a Three Stooges movie, <laughs> wouldn't it? Everybody's all white. <laughs> uh, we have our garlic pepper blend, sodium-free garlic pepper blend. So that's our salt and pepper. Yeah, that's our yeah. pepper there on the top of that. And then we're going to put a little bit of cream. And the flour and the, and the cream is what makes the little gravy with the butter that richens us up. And then we're going to, oops, I forgot the wild rice. Got to have some wild rice yeah. in there. So we'll put the wild rice, we'll put the beans, we'll put the squash. We'll put some more asparagus on top of that. And we'll put some nor more of the white corn. Well, now the, cor the white corn's not sacred to the Oneidas, but it was a staple. So they, they thank Mother Earth for the for the having the white corn when times were tough, yeah. and they dried it for the winter. And when you dry it for the winter, you hydrate it back up with events like this. I love using the white corn. Not television shoots. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> right. But the white corn, the flavor is just phenomenal. So we're gonna put a whole bunch of butter on top, and I think. I can maybe put another half a layer on top of this. What the heck? It's only butter. No, of oh, everything. We'll okay. see what happens. And then we're going to add some more flour. The flour is what's going to thicken it. So I'm going to add a bunch of flour on top. And that milk's going to bubble back up. Now we have the MHP set for indirect method of cooking. Get some creamer in there and make sure there's enough. We'll go with the flour. A little windy day out today. Yeah, it is a little windy. Yeah, that's for sure. A little pepper in there. And we'll just top it off with a little bit of the ingredients just so we All right. use up some of the stuff. Nothing goes to waste. In the 1800s, nothing went to no, waste. I'll no. tell you that. In the 1970s, nothing went to waste. No, no. <laughs> Put the skillet top back on. So we have the flour, we have the cream, we have the butter. Uh, we have all the great ingredients that were all sourced locally as much as possible. And we're gonna put that on the grill and we're gonna let that simmer up in direct method cooking 350 for about an hour. Okay. And it should come out just wonderful. I'm gonna start it at a direct method because I have all that cream in there. All right, sounds good. And then we'll turn it off. All right. So we'll get that going. Okay. Wanna stir the onions once? Yeah, I was gonna stir them babies. Oh, we're getting there, man. Yeah. See that? See how they're doing on the bottom there? And look at that. So we'll get those oh, going. Man, Not the aroma. All right, let's get this segment done with Mr. Morales. Right, Freddie, play us, us out of here, buddy. Freddie, we want to go bye-bye. GolfThornberry.com. GolfThornberry.com, if you would, please. Welcome back to Mad Dog and Merrill Midwest Grilling. My name's Adam Marty. I'm the executive chef here at Thornberry Creek. I'm sure you guys have cooked about 5 million burgers in your lifetime, but I'm going to show you how we do it here. So we have an Oneida bison patty. 
We buy a whole buffalo every year. Um, we get some ground, some primal cuts, and just seasoning it with some salt and pepper. Take some bacon fat, put that on the grill, let that heat up for about 10 seconds. As I'm doing that, I'm gonna grab my bun, butter that up quick. Brioche bun, four and a half inch, I'll put that right there. Grill's nice and hot. Take my patty. Season the other side with just a little bit of more salt. Caramelized onions, kind of in the bacon fat. If you want them to cook in that, in the fat from the, from the burger, but just keep it nice and tight like that. All right, we'll give her a flip. Gently fat that down. Uh, this is Roth blue cheese. Just kind of put that up a little bit. Put that on top. That as melty as we can. This will help melt the cheese also. It takes about two hours to caramelize these onions. Now I challenge you, Midwest Grilling Buddies, it's your turn. Hey folks, I'll tell you what, boy, Merrill, I'll tell you what, this is Mad Dog and Merrill's Midwest Grilling. It is. And we are America's favorite grilling buddies. Buddies. <laughs> That's for sure. You're my buddy sometimes. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, thank you, Adam. I'll tell you what, Adam there did us some nice, beautiful uh, caramelized uh, by onions with bison burger with the blue cheese. Yeah, we're, we're gonna try to beat him, okay? I think he's okay. gonna win. I think he's gonna win today. Uh, it's gonna be tough. I'll tell you what, I'm not throwing in the towel, but. No, I know. I thought he was saying wind. Because we <laughs> <laughs> that is for sure. We got the wind today over well, here. Well, I'll tell you what, we're gonna flavorize our, uh, but this is beautiful bison burger. So yeah. lean, so delicious, cooked medium rare, medium. Uh, well done if you want to, then slow cook it. It's so lean, so rich, so healthy for you. Uh, of course, the, our good friends of Oneida have a beautiful bison farm with a beautiful bison overlook. Yeah, it's great. A buffalo overlook. Uh, and, and it has a bronze bison right there. Just beautiful place. Uh, you can go to exploreoneida.com. But once again, we are at our good friends at, uh, at Thornberry at Oneida. Thornberry Creek at Oneida. And uh, the bison's looking really, really good there. That looks delicious. We got to get to that before the sun does, I'll tell you that. Sure. We're going to do a little tea rub. And right. we're going to add that to the ingredients here for our bison, and I'm going to do some apples with it. So you oh, folks, really? I don't know, if, I don't know if you've ever seen us do the uh, the coffee rubs before, I but am. tea rubs are, yeah. are wonderful. So we went to the Oneida Market and we picked up some ginger lime tea. Good stuff. And we're going to add some ginger lime tea inside of our little coffee grinder. We buy that by the ounce. I'm going to put that in the cooler before that blows away. <laughs> add a little grandma hazel. Okay. I love the flavor of these rubs. Here. Oh Especially man, the, the tea, tea rubs are phenomenal. You grab that chai tea, that delicious chai tea. Yep. So all we're gonna simply do is grind that down, pulverize it. You know, I bought this at a, the Shano Flea Market. I was gonna ask you that. If you were... I've never used it. Well, so far, oh, it's, it's working. working, it's doing good. I think that's, oh, look at that. Look at that oh, don't man. get that in your face, I'll tell you that's. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our ginger rub in the wind. That's a new song. It is. Against the wind. And we're going to put that inside there. The flavor, the aroma is absolutely delicious. So that's the ginger and grandma hazel all ground down. We're going to double its size in a little bit of brown sugar. So we're going to sweeten all up right, our little bison burgers too. Sweeten that baby up, mix that around a little bit. And we're just going to add a little bit of that rub inside our burger. Okay. We're going to take some blue cheese and we're doing our blue cheese. Oh, we're going to do the blue oh, cheese wow. on the inside. So rather on the outside with the caramelized onion, we'll save a little bit for that. And we're just gonna mix that all together. And we're gonna make some bison burgers that we're gonna cook on a nice high heat to begin with. And then we're gonna turn them down and slow cook them. And you can find bison straight from the farm at the Oneida Market at 500 Packerland Avenue. When you come to town to go see the Wall of Legends, yes. when you go see the Veterans Law, when you go see the nice little historical when you come to town for the Big Apple Fest or the Pow Wow. Oh yeah, a lot of things going or on here. Or come golfing at Thornberry. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm, I'm gonna patty in. these babies up here. All right. And Meryl's going to do, oh hey, you know what we're gonna do too is we're gonna take a, uh, this is beautiful uh, porterhouse steak. So we're gonna take a nice porterhouse steak from the market. And in this wind, I'm gonna lay that right there and I'm gonna throw this away, folks. Okay. And we're just gonna take a little bit more of that tea rub. Oh, and we're gonna put talking. that right over oh. the top of that beautiful porterhouse steak. 
And we're going to place, they have black Angus, they got regular grass fed beef, and they have the bison. Mm. All delicious, I'll guarantee you. And we're going to place that on our nice little smoker, and we're going to smoke that baby on our pellet grill. All right, sounds pitfalls. good. Mix How about a little sauce with that, huh? For the, for the steak, sounds yeah, good. Yeah, steak sauce. You know, I like making sauces, and they're going to talk about cleaning out the refrigerator. And uh, what I'm using today is some of our spicy barbecue sauce, Worcestershire sauce, some good old molasses. I'm using some uh, blackberry jam from the cannery right here at Oneida here. It comes out really, really good. So first of all, obviously, I'm going to start with a little bit of the spicy barbecue sauce. It has a habanero mash to it. And you definitely, when you're making this, you definitely want to taste this all the time, too, just to make sure. Because you don't want to overdo something, you know? I've done that before, There's too, your Freddy. jelly, your jam opened up from the cannery. You're a good man. Thank you, sir. A lot of people never think of using jam, even for sauces and stuff. I'll tell you. For uh, chicken, great. We even use it even for on fish. I'm gonna stir that around. What's great about their preserves, I've had them before, they're like pure preserves. Yeah. <laughs> they're like spreads almost. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're, they know, really they're, are it's delicious. It's the real, real stuff. It is the real stuff. A little bit of the W sauce. When they here. say blackberries, they're blackberries. <laughs> <laughs> they're not cheating on the product. No, no, that's they're for not. Sure. Okay, always a little bit of molasses, not too much, but just a little bit, just to sweeten that up a little bit. Uh, molasses boiled test. Another this sauce here would be really good on ribs too. A little bit of molasses. Bring that around. Mm, man, I'll tell you what, I can smell. It smells good already. Stir that up. Still nice and thick. That should use on the side. How many years, Merrill? Move that oh, for the cameraman. Move that for the like cameraman. How many years? <laughs> too many. <laughs> I hear this all, right. all right. All right. Let's see that sampler. What do you think? Is it sweet enough? It is. It's perfect. There it's got go. the right pizzazz with on the, with the uh, spicy on there. You really feel the spicy, the habanero in there. It's perfect for that. Some people wouldn't like it that much, but I love it. Absolutely love it. So I've got a nice clean knife. All right. And I'm going to take the apple very quickly. And all we're simply going to do, when you go to Big Apple Fest, you pick the apples by the pound. they got 4,000 trees. Mm. 4,000 trees. And they are, they, last year they were chuck full. Yeah. Now what I did is, I'm not going to serve these because you're going to call in. I touched in here with my hands with the bison. <laughs> so all we're simply going to do is show you what we're going to do. And I'm not going to put these on the grill like I planned. Just so you folks know, don't write in. But we have that beautiful tea rub with the brown sugar that gets toasted on the grill, set aside the beautiful steaks or the burgers, along with Merrill's little glaze. Hey, I'll tell you what, folks, we'll be right back and we're going to show yes, you some we good will. eats. Welcome back to Mad Dog and Merrill's Midwest Grill, and we are with the executive chef Adam from our good friends at Thornberry at Oneida, Thornberry Creek at Oneida. Right and uh, you can go to uh, golfthornberry.com to learn about all the great events that happen here. I mentioned the banquet halls, but I never mentioned the special events throughout the summer. You got some dandies. We do. So the second Sunday of every month, we do a brunch rotating menu. There's some okay. tables that, you know, stay on there that people love. Uh, we do beer gardens every, oh. every month. I like the, the beer garden. Month. Yep. The band that comes out, we have a trailer. Um, our friends from K kind of bring out the trailer and, and bring out some beers for us. Awesome. All the local Green Bay favorite. Um, we have a full bar inside, and it's just, it's kind of a party. That's Everybody great. It's a great time. So. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, you came out with an empty plate because our uh, platter, because our executive, our executive producer, we just call him our producer. Yep, I thought, <laughs> yep. <laughs> he ate it. <laughs> Here's what we're going to do, Adam. I'm going to toss over. We're going to take, these are our, our, our bison burgers. We put the tea rub on the inside. We put blue cheese, and I'm gonna add a little blue cheese to melt that on top. So you got the blue cheese on the inside? And we added blue cheese on oh, the yeah. inside, blue cheese on the outside. Awesome. I've got some wonderful onions for you to help us deglaze, because I've never deglazed. I'll put them right here, you're okay. And beautiful onions, caramelized, semi-perfection, maybe a little bit more. I feel great. Yeah, do the thank you. Do a little deglazing for us. Or, or, so I know yeah, it's normally you, done on the grill, right? Yeah, you just want a hot pan. That's the biggest thing. Okay. Add some vinegar. You could add wine, marsala, really whatever Ooh. you want. Oh, just really enough to kind of get all the goodies off the bottom. Yeah. And coat those. Get all that Ooh. stuff that you cook for hours, you know? Boy, I love that aroma. That's it's why That's why every time I cook, I deglaze the pan, because they leave the stuff from the pine before. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Look at that. I love that. So I'm going to oh. grab a little bit of those Please great... Oh, man, all those right. look delish. Those are caramelized onions. Merrill's going to put a little bit of his, uh, we actually took some blackberry preserves from the 
uh, Oneida Market on Beautiful. Packerland Avenue. Beautiful. We had a little yeah. spicy barbecue sauce, a little Worcestershire, a little molasses, and we made a little glaze. Oh, yeah, We're going to yeah, add some yeah, caramelized yeah, onions yeah, on yeah. top of that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're going to add more caramelized onions on top of that, sauce. baby. That's beautiful. We're going to take that. We're going to take that. I'm going to do a little slicing right here to show the inside of a nice medium bison burger with any luck. We did pretty oh, good, didn't we? Yeah. All right, good oh, job. So the, yeah, doesn't that look good? Now, here's our, here's our little, this is our little casserole we made with the three sisters. And I got a wooden spoon right behind you there, Adam, old buddy. And I'm going to take Meryl's plate. We're going to dish okay. out a nice little thing for Fast Freddy. <laughs> So that, that, look at that, that's stuck nice. There I go, go stuck nice because it's the flour. All right, we'll be right back. Thank you, Adam. From our good friends at Thornberry Creek at Oneida, golfthornberry.com. Tell we see you next time. Happy golfing! Hey, all right. Mad Dog and Merrill's Midwest Grillin' is a production of Lashbow Visual Communications.